What's up guys and welcome to my trap code particular tutorial. Today we're going through um, three different ways how I use a trap code. Um, it's kind of more on the advanced side so um, if you're new it may be hard following along but I'll do my best explaining um, every part of trap code so you get an understanding of how it's done and how to create your own um, objects and splines and etc. So here's example one that I made and then example two is kind of like star trail sort of thing and then example three here is dust so I think we're gonna start off with the dust um, cause that's the easiest of the three and then we'll probably go into this one and then the final one here was this um, I don't know what you call this but it's what I used in my uh, MVP part of all we know and everyone asks <laughs> how I got this done um, the project file of that video is up on my sofa but i'm gonna go into detail on how i get these things done um here so you guys that don't want to um buy project files you can just watch this tutorial so let's hop right into it and i'll show you how um each example is done all right so here's the comp that we're going to start um with our dust particles so first thing you need to know about particular is that in order to use it you get to put it on a solid you're not putting the effect actually on any layers so um, let's go ahead and start from there and then I'm going to be moving pretty fast from there. So you may just want to copy settings when I'm putting them on um, and then kind of adjust stuff to your liking afterwards. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started and do your best to follow along. All right, so let's go ahead and create our first solid. And to do that, I'm going to hit uh, control Y and I'm going to name it dust. The color doesn't matter, but I usually make these white just for the heck of it. Um, all right. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the middle of our layers. Um, so let's go ahead and go to our dust layer and we're going to add partic oops, particular pocket spell. Um, yep, and then we double click that on. Okay. And then from here, I actually go ahead and pre comp. So I'm going to hit Control Shift C and then call it, yeah, dust comp shirt. And, and we're good. And then let's go into this comp and we're gonna be working from here so in order to get the particles to um be spread out like um like we want it we're gonna need to change our emitter type so let's go into emitter and change the point to box there it is um so now we're in box we have more control over the size of the emitter so you see what i mean here um so we're gonna go down to emitter size which is right here and we're gonna turn that up to 19 20 and the Y size to 1080 and if you haven't guessed already my comp size is 1920 by 1080 so the particles are going to be spawning or emitting from this size so it's so now we have particles that are emitting from 1920 by 1080 area and we just need to adjust how they move and how they come into the scene and we should be good um, so next thing we're going to do, we actually go to emission extras, which is right here and hit the drop down arrow and we're going to adjust this thing called pre-run. I'm going to turn that to hundred percent. So as you can see, all the particles are pre-rendered into the, not rendered, but pre-born into the scene. So if I go to the very beginning of our scene, they are, all the particles are there. If I turn this back down to zero, they're not spawned. So yeah, that helps a lot when you can have control over how early the particles spawn in. So I'll turn that to 100%. And then we're gonna go down to particle right here. And I'm gonna adjust the life up to nine. And the feather, um, that's kind of personal preference, but I like zero. And then the size to three. Okay, so now we got all these particles that are just just floating, right? <laughs> so for the the motion of the particles, we're actually gonna go down to the physics of the entire um, layer, and it's right here. Hit the drop down arrow, and I'm gonna go down to gravity, and um, I'm gonna turn the gravity to negative 95 or negative 100 around there. It should work just fine. And as you can see, we've got the particle. Let me play it through. You get particles floating upwards, so you can already see this doesn't look too bad already. Um, but there's a couple other things I'm going to do that'll make the scene look more natural and have some depth to it. So I'm going to scroll up to our emitter size again, 
and you see this Z size, this is going to add some depth. So I'm gonna turn this up to, let's do 3000, right? So now I've got particles. Some of them look big, some of them look small, cause let um, me scroll, just like kind of do like this so you can see like what that's changing. Let me hit control Z. So yeah, so it basically adds depth to the particles like that. So if you like how that looks, that's pretty much all you need, but there's some other steps I'm gonna show later on to make it look even better. Um, but for right now, that's pretty much it to create dust with trap code. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one and get started with something a little bit more complicated. All right, so as we move on to this next one, I'm gonna show you this quick tip. Um, once you have already created a solid in a um, composition, you can actually, well, it automatically creates a folder up here called solids, and you can actually just click and drag another solid right into there, and it has nothing on it. So you can basically start from scratch there instead of hitting control Y again, because then it, it'll create another solid. And if you keep doing that, you'll you have this long list of solids. So that's just a little helpful tip. Let's go ahead and add particular to our layer. And then we're gonna pre-compose, control, control shift C. And I'm gonna call it star, uh, I don't know, star trails one word, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> star trails comp. Um, all right, and then let's go into that comp. So now we've got this um, base setting of particular. Um, let's go ahead and go down these settings. I've got the particles per second on 85 the velocity on 140 and then um, the pre-run I actually kept it on zero because um, it kind of looks better that way when the star trail is kind of like forming and then as they go it gets longer um, so you'll see what that what that does um, I'm actually gonna jump down to aux system this is something that's super super useful for the, um, the sort of effect that we're doing well not just useful necessary um, so let's go ahead and change the emission to continuously because that's how we want it and you can already see it's doing something there it's adding a trail of particles after the particles are after the main particle is being born so let's scroll down to the size of the part the um aux system it's going to go to 3.5 and then after size let's go ahead and adjust the color over life so what that means, it's a little bit bigger. Um, what that means is as these particles are born, they're gonna turn into these colors. So from left to right, it's gonna turn into these colors. And there's some presets here that you can use. Um, there's this, I don't know, like this warm sunset type of color. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and check this second one and we're gonna adjust it from there because it's just two, it's a two color gradient. And let's go to our first one here, double click it. And I'm gonna go from, I'm gonna get the particle from like a purple to a blue, a white blue, something like that should work. Okay, you can't really see it all that well because we gotta turn the particles per second up and the blending mode, we'll change that in just a second. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna go up to our particles per second of our aux system and turn that up to 600. Okay, and that's gonna create these straight lines right now. Um, if we scroll down to the physics, now remember, keep in mind that this we are in the aux system physics, not the physics of the entire particle. So this is only gonna change the trails. So let's go down to the physics and turn up the turbulent position. And let's turn it up to 240. Okay, so now we've got the particles coming in, they're kind of trailing, they're, they're changing direction and kind of flaring, I guess you could say. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna change the blending mode to screen. So now I've getting sort of the look that we want, but the motion isn't where we want. So let's go ahead and go up to physics of the entire particle. So that's this one here. And we've got um, air, and we're gonna change the wind right down here with XYZ wind. And we're gonna change the X to negative 650. And then look at that. We've basically done now all we need to do from here well not necessarily need to do but what i like to do is actually position this to where as these particles are born it's um also moving into a certain direction so let's go to the very top and keyframe well we go to the beginning of our scene as well and then keyframe the position xy so hit stopwatch there 
I'm gonna tap I'm gonna tap you to bring these up you don't have to but then go to the end and then I'm just gonna position it that way okay but not too much because if you do too much you'll see well, look at this it'll start to spread out and you would have to turn up the um, particles per second and the the um, life of the particles if you wanted to make them move a lot so I just did a little bit there let me control Z that so you can see how much so some, from 960 I went up to let's just go up to like 13 yeah 1350 around there whatever um, so that's should be good there and then if we go back to our main comp see what this looks like um, it doesn't look right because we're gonna do two things it's taking a second to load yeah keep that in mind too this is a pretty CPU heavy program it's not using the GPU as of now um, it's only using CPU um, so let's go ahead and change this bundling mode to screen as well so I'm gonna tap F4 to bring up those settings and then under mode click um, I'm gonna do screen and then um, now we've got that sort of look I'm going to just scale this up you know just position it whatever that might be too big yeah so that's really all there um, I think I blurred it after that but you get the gist of that of how to do a star trail okay lastly I'm going ahead and reproduce uh, sample one which was the um, sort of star trails or particles kind of moving upwards like upwards and outwards sort of thing um, yeah I don't know what to call it really um, so let's go ahead and go to solids and do the same thing grab the solid put it right in between control shift or no whoops um, add particular first and then control shift C and I'm gonna call it I don't know I usually just call it particles up because I have no idea what to call it something I just made up on my own um, so let's go into that comp and then um, let's go ahead and start putting the settings on so I've got the um, particles per second on 20 and then the velocity on 360 and then the velocity random on 100% so that means um, velocity is kind of like it's kind of hard to explain it's kind of like the it's, it's not really the speed of the particles it's actually like the distance that the emitter emits the particles from the center if that makes sense so um, the randomness means it's going to emit in random spots from the center of our emitter so yeah I got that on 100% and then under emission extras um, for the pre-run I've got that on 90 and then I'm gonna go ahead and go into the particle put the life on 5 and then the life random which is kind of the same thing 100% so like the how long each particle lasts is going to randomize uh, like ev every single particle 100% of the particles are going to randomize um, between I don't know if it's like between five seconds and one second or something like that but that's what I have it on 100% um, then the feather of course zero I don't like feather I don't like how that looks um, then size of the particle is on eight and then let's go ahead and hop into our aux system close that aux system put on continuously and then we've got the life of these particles are going to be five um, the particles per second is going to be 450 oops 450 and then the blending mode is going to be screen as usual and let's change the color over life um, to the same thing as we had before I'm just gonna go here and then go from a purple to a blue okay so got something kind of interesting and then another quick little tip um, about the um, color over life is that you can change the position of these so if you want um, this blue doesn't look blue it looks kind of purple yeah whatever um, so yeah if you want the blue to show up earlier you can slide this over you can see you can kind of see things turning more blue but um, let's go ahead and hop to our physics of our aux system and turn the turbulent position up to 150 
Okay, so now I've got these like squiggly lines. Uh, I might turn that down a little bit. Actually, it looks kind of like a bit much. 120 maybe. Let's go down to 100. You know, it doesn't have to be exact. Just kind of show you, showing you how I usually use this plugin. Next, let's go to the physics of the entire layer and then um, change the gravity to negative 160. Okay, so now I've got that. All right, so we've got the particles moving up and then I'm going to scroll up to our position of our emitter and then just take the Y and move it down. Okay, I'm just gonna move it about to there because when we get into our comp, I can move the layer as I, as I please. So I'm actually gonna change one other thing, which is the color over life in the aux system because it looks like too much purple to me. Um, color over life so you, what you can do is you can actually move this over to the side and you'll add some colors I'll move it all the way so you can see that see it's more, turning more and more blue so I'm just gonna move this to about there there we go okay and then let's head to our main comp here and take a look and let's change the blending mode remember F4 to change the mode there and then go to mode, you know, column, and then check screen. Okay, we've got that. So next we're going to uh, position this layer to where this point, where all this, these um, trails are coming out isn't shown. So I'm going to scale it up some, and then just kind of position it down, scale it up some more. You know, you get the gist of it. it and then if you wanted to, you could, you could do this inside this comp and move it if you wanted to it doesn't really matter it's just i'm just being kind of lazy just just want to show you guys how i use particular in the, like the main gist of how it's done um and then the other thing you could do for a scene like this i would put the particles in front and behind so i would duplicate it and put the one on top kind of like i don't know i'm just being lazy <laughs> i would like do like that or something but i would what i would actually do is actually create a whole another comp of particles and then make a slight as like a similar version to this so it's not you know completely covering it but there's particles going in front so i'd probably turn the particles per second down and then leave every, everything else the same but yeah i would put particles in front and behind for now i'm just gonna do that though which is really lazy and ugly but um all right so now i've got our particles made i'm gonna show you one last thing that's really really useful it's called fl depth of field um, what that's going to do is going to add um, some realism to our scene. I'll show you what I mean here. Um, so let's go into our particles comp and I'll show you how I do it. Um, so first, let's go ahead and add a adjustment layer. So hit control alt Y and then I'm going to name it FL depth of field. Okay. And then I'm going to search for it. Depth of field. All right. So that's on there, but we're not gonna change these settings yet. We have to do something before that. Um, we actually need to add another solid so that we can change the depth layer to that solid. So I'm gonna go and hit Control Y. I'm gonna add a whole new solid. I'm gonna call it Gradient. And then the color doesn't matter because we're actually gonna do, we're gonna turn off the visuals in a second here. Um, so I'm actually gonna put a gradient on this layer, a gradient ramp, I should say. And then go ahead and pre comp it. Control Shift C. I'm going to call it Gradient Ramp. Okay. And then you can turn off the visuals. And then I'm going to go to our adjustment layer um, and then change the depth layer to the gradient ramp. And then I'm going to select the depth and um, select the very center of our scene. And then turn up the radius of our, of our lens. And keep turning it up until you see things starting to blur. Starting to see it just a little bit. Keep going higher until you get a look that you like. And turn it up really high so I know you guys can see it. Okay, um, all the way up to like 42. That's probably a little too strong, but just so you guys can see what's going on, you see that these are the center is not nearly as blurred as the outside parts. Um, so I'm gonna put it on like 32 or something, right? So that's not bad. And if we go back to our sample, let me turn this off, because that's really ugly. Um, 
you can see, see it's probably still too high. I'm gonna turn it down some more to like 25. Um, the different different scenes are gonna be different, but yeah, you get the gist of that. It's gonna add some little bit of realism to the scene. Um, next, let's go to our dust comp. Cause I, I really like doing with the dust more than anything. I think it looks the best with dust. So. Um, where's our sample three, I believe. Yes, so here's our dust, and then I'm actually going to go into our desk comp, and I'm gonna just copy that gradient ramp that we made already, and then turn it off. Control Alt Y to add an adjustment layer. You don't have to name it, but I'm just, I just like naming my stuff. Oops, if I could spell depth of field. Okay, and then add depth of field. Boom, all right. Change the depth layer to gradient ramp and select the depth, the center of the scene, and then turn up the radius. We go up to like, probably around the same, uh, let's do 20, okay. And then go to our sample three and take a look. And uh, I don't know how well you guys will be able to see that, but it, to me, it looks really, really nice. Let me try to play it through. It's going to take a while. It takes a lot of CPU power to do trap code and fish lift. I think that's how you say it, fish lift. But um, it's definitely worth it in the end. Um, I would. Those are the things I would do at, towards the end of a project, like after I've selected all the scenes and basically got all the motion that I wanted. Then I would add things like particular and depth of field and magic bullet looks and those sort of these are like post I, I, I call them like post effects so um there you have it um those are the three ways that i use particular um you guys will probably create better stuff than i have because <laughs> i i haven't messed with particular too much um my my skill set's kind of limited there but those are it's really all that i use um yeah, you guys, leave a like if you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, let me know if you have more questions or something else you want to see. Because I, I do go and read every single comment, whether or not I reply or not. So, just, yeah, just let me know what you guys want to see. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you really enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time.